Okay, welcome. Well, for the first time we're going to try a demonstration at home. Um, a conductivity demonstration. So they will find this paper in your notes and we will fill out the data table provided. We will use this conductivity meter to determine how well different uh, solutions, liquids or solids are able to conduct electricity when these probes are placed in them. So the meter has a low indicator and a high indicator. Uh, when we press low, we'll count up from 1 to 10. When we press high, we'll multiply these values by 10. So if I press the high button and the 8 lights up, then that would be a conductivity of 80. If I press the low button and the 8 lights up, that would be a conductivity of 8. So I'll try to explain that as we continue with the demo. So the solutions we're going to use today, or liquids we're going to use, or solids, will be distilled water. We have some tap water some table salt, some sodium chloride dissolved in water, copper sulfate dissolved in water, potassium dichromate dissolved in water, sugar dissolved in water, we have some ethanol, then sodium chloride and alcohol, ammonia, acetic acid, and then finally cyclohexane. So, let's take a look at our conductivity demo setup here. What this conductivity meter essentially is, is we have a power supply connected to two electrodes, and those two electrodes are being uh, separated from each other, and in this case, a solution. Now, uh, they're also connected to a light bulb. If the circuit is complete, or if those two electrodes touch themselves, the light bulb would light up. However, as you can see, they're not touching in the diagram, nor will they be touching during our demonstration. There's a gap between them. Now, there's something in some of these solutions that allows the current to be transferred from one electrode to the other electrode. We can identify that by the light bulb lighting up, or in this case, our indicators lighting up to tell us how conductive it is. So, if the light bulb is on, that's my symbolism for that light bulb being on, there's something that is completing the circuit between those electrodes. If it's off, of course, nothing can complete that circuit. So let's start with distilled water. So I have a jar of distilled water here. And we'll go ahead and we will crack the lid. Hopefully we won't make too much of a mess here. And we'll place our conductivity meter in the distilled water. And I will press, to begin with, the low button. And oh, it says 10 plus. So now I'll press the high button and you can see the number 1 lights up. Now since I pressed the 10 or the high button we're going to multiply that by 10 so we're going to say that conducts at a conductivity level of 10. Uh, we won't use any, any units here. So for distilled water it does conduct on our conductivity meter at 10 units. Okay, let's try tap water and see if that conducts any better or maybe worse. So, here's our tap water. Place our conductivity meter in. We'll press low to begin with. So it says 10 plus, so now we'll press our high button and it says 7. Oh, now it says 6. So we are going to go with 60. So, for some reason, our tap water conducts at 60 units, so there must be something in that tap water that will promote the conductivity of electricity from one electrode to the next. Now, between tests, I'm going to make sure that I clean these electrodes off thoroughly so we don't contaminate uh, what was in the previous solution with the current solution. So these will be cleaned quite thoroughly between tests. Next up will be our solid sodium chloride. So this is table salt. I got it from our family salt shaker. I won't return it to that salt shaker. We'll dispose of it afterwards. Don't tell Mrs. Hummer. Uh, and I'm not worried that she'll watch this video. <laughs> it would be funny if she did, but she is not interested. So the electrodes are in the sodium chloride. I'm going to press the low indicator. We see nothing, and of course the high indicator would be nothing. So solid sodium chloride, let me show that the electrodes are immersed. Solid sodium chloride does oh, not conduct whatsoever. Okay, 
Now remember, there's something about solids that we have talked about in the previous unit where the ions are locked together and they vibrate back and forth, but they can't slide past one another. So think about that. Okay, I'm cleaning these off. And we'll go to, oh, so this was for sodium chloride solid. We have zero, no conductivity whatsoever. Okay, let's try the next up, which is sodium chloride AQ. You guys know that AQ means dissolved in water. So let's take a look at this and see how well this conducts. Place our meter in there. And we'll press the low button, and it says 10 plus. So we'll press the high, and it's up to 8. So um, on our scale, we would call that 80 units. So 80 units for sodium chloride dissolved in water. So there's something in there that conducts, of course, even better than tap water. We're up to 80 units for sodium chloride dissolved in water. Now think about that. When sodium chloride dissolves in water from our earlier chapter, remember that water molecules can surround the sodium and the chloride ions and pull them away from each other. So we have ions in solution there, and I wonder if that might be the cause of our conductivity. Next up is copper 2 sulfate dissolved in water. So what do you suspect will happen here? That's an ionic compound dissolved in water. Will you expect high conductivity, low conductivity, or none at all? Well, let's try. We'll press the low button. It says 10 plus. Press the high button, and that is all the way up to, looks like, 90 and for a moment there if you guys saw the 10 went up so that so far that's the highest of all at 90 units so put a lid on that and we'll record that in our data table at 90 of our conductivity units so let's push this paper up make sure you guys can see our data so far 10 for distilled water 60 for tap sodium chloride solid zero Sodium chloride dissolved in water, 80. Copper 2 sulfate dissolved in water, 90. What about potassium dichromate? Well, that's ionic, and that certainly is soluble in water. As you can see, it's a nice, pretty orange solution. So, let's take a look and see what the conductivity for potassium dichromate would be. Here we go. We will press the low button, and it says 10 plus. So we'll go to the high. And that is up to 80. So do that again. Drop down to 70. So we'll go low. High is up to the 7 on the high. So that would be 70. So that's pretty high as well. So we have 70 units for our potassium dichromate dissolved in water. Let's try sugar. Is sugar ionic? Hmm. When sugar dissolves in water, does it dissolve as a molecule or does it dissolve as ions? You might want to think about that or look that up. Now this says glucose and I'll be using sucrose today. We should get the same results no matter what. So the conductivity meter's in. We'll press our low button and it says 9. So that'd be 9 conductivity. Let's go high on this to see what happens. Nothing really double check it here. Looks like we're at nine conductivity units for sugar dissolved in water. So that's about what we were for distilled water. If you take, a note, if you take notice, distilled water was at 10 and our sugar in water did just as poorly. Okay, next up will be ethanol. Uh, actually in your notes here I have methanol but I didn't have any at the school, so we'll be using some ethanol for this test. Does that dissolve ionically, or does it dissolve as a molecule? Let's do our test and find out. Here it is on the low setting. Uh, it says 8 and 9 together. The high button has nothing. So it looks like it's now set at 8. I'll move that around a little bit, and it's going to stay at 8 units. So ethanol conducts about the same as distilled water. Oh well, yeah, technically a little bit less, but with the apparatus we're using, it really is pretty darn close. 
pretty darn close to what we have for distilled water. How about sodium chloride and alcohol? Now if we take a look at this mixture, you can see it's actually heterogeneous. We have our alcohol here, and if I swirl this for you, can you see the sodium chloride is not dissolving very well, if at all, in the alcohol. So, we have our alcohol at 8. If any of the sodium chloride is dissolving ionically, it would be higher than 8. If it's not, it would stay at about 8. So let's take a look. We will get our conduct, clean conductivity meter out. The electrodes are in there. Let's make sure you can see it. Press low. Oh, it's 9. Press high. That's interesting. Boy, that's erroneous data there. So it doesn't go 10 plus here. It goes 9, but on the high, it says 5. That is interesting. Well, we're going to have to go with the high meter, and we're going to say 50 for that. So some of that sodium chloride must dissolve in the water. So we're going to go ahead and put 50, but our data also said 9. We're going to put a question mark there. That's somewhat confusing data there. Okay, next up is ammonia. So let's try ammonia. Um, does ammonia dissolve ionically? Let's see, we've got to get these electrodes immersed here. have to do a little bit of work to do that. Put this at an angle. Press the low button. We're at 10 plus, press the high button, and the ammonia is up to 90 on that scale. So we will have 90 for ammonia. So we'll record that. That's pretty high, so there must be some ions in my ammonia solution. Next up will be acetic acid. So the acetic acid I'm using is actually just some white vinegar. Uh, we'll put the conductivity meter in there, press the low setting, 10 plus, the high setting, that's up to 90 just like the ammonia was. So that must have some ions in there as well. So we'll record that as 90. And then our last substance will be cyclohexane. So the stuff is quite aromatic here. Well, it smells. And we will try the low setting first. Nothing, just to verify the high setting, nothing. So this has a conductivity of absolutely zero. So cyclohexane hexane has no conductivity at all. Okay, zero. So, we need to answer this question, what is needed in order for electricity to be conducted into solution? And the answer is mobile ions. We have to have positive and negative ions that can move back and forth between the electrodes to conduct the electricity. So if mobile ions are present, conduct, uh, we will have what's called an electrolyte. So, that was one of your vocabulary terms from an earlier assignment. So it's an electrolyte. So those that had a conductivity that was higher, we would say, are electrolytes. Those that had a very low electrolytes, or a low conductivity, we'd call poor electrolytes. And those that had a conductivity of zero on our data table, we would call a non-electrolyte. So an electrolyte is something that when dissolved in water can conduct an electric current. Alrighty, I hope you guys enjoyed your demo um, and we may do this again for you in our classroom. Bye-bye.